CES is starting up this week and the buzz is already flying about TVs, cheap tablets, and the battle for the living room. Problem is, the only thing I'm seeing are companies pushing the hardware further, but no one's talking about improving the interface or the experience. And while 4K pictures are absolutely beautiful, there really isn't any content out there to support it. Of course, rumors are running rampant that an actual TV will be the next Apple TV, but I'm not putting a lot of faith in those rumors. But if they do, I'm still hoping that they make a little standalone box and maybe call it an Apple TV Mini or something, but we'll see. Since Apple doesn't show up at CES, then we're going to see what everybody else's attempt to snag the living room market is going to be. We're going to see the latest versions of Google TV and the new Roku box on a stick for the TVs that support that. And Logitech has left Google TV behind, so Vizio has jumped into the mix with its CoStar box, and Asus is supposed to be launching their new Cube set-top box. Okay. LG is also said to be launching a Google TV product. Now, all of this was supposed to be last year's CES, but uh, at the last minute, Google asked the manufacturers to hold off so that they could refine the software. Now, I'm not 100% sure if what they're going to show is going to be any different than what I've experienced since I have a Logitech Google TV. Uh, while there have been stability improvements, there's been no real leaps and bounds as far as the interface. But it's also looking like sound bars are hitting the convention floor and the hopes of replacing the 5.1 or 7.1 speaker systems in your home theaters. I'm, al I'm also anxious to hear about Qualcomm's new Stream Boost Wi-Fi router that's supposed to revolutionize internet bandwidth management, and it's supposed to learn over time to pr prioritize uh, the internet traffic. It looks like CarTech could be making a big splash too from in-car accessories to self-driving cars. Yes, you heard that correctly. Toyota and Audi are both going to be showing off self-driving cars. Audi is said to be able to locate a parking spot and self-park without a human behind the wheel, which is going to make those trips to the shopping mall a lot more interesting. One of the more interesting things that I've been reading about is a combination LCD and e-ink screen on a phone from a Yoda phone. While I don't have high hopes that this is going to be a well-built device, I'm always down for checking out a new approach to things. I understand the concept of having both screen types, as you can save on battery, but it sounds clunky in this iteration, so it'll be interesting to see how they actually execute the function of two screens on one device. And the thing that everyone is abuzz about is Samsung's new TV shape invitation. They're showing a portrait scape TV versus a traditional landscape. The invite also implies that it's going to be see-through. What does it all mean? Well, Samsung is the only one who really knows, but I'm guessing that they, if they are releasing a TV that is shaped like that, that the rest of the space could be used for, like, web surfing or a picture-by-picture, -picture, uh, something along those lines. Samsung does offer multitasking on their tablets. Maybe they're going to be bridging that to the TV. I'm not sure. It's weird because the promo video that they release has all these TVs from the old picture tube ones to the new flat panels all walking to this trade show so they can see the new TV but at the end it's just a traditional shaped TV so maybe it's all just marketing buzz we'll see when it all comes out so we'll see what bubbles up to the top and shines at CES will last year's winner simple TV even show up and if so what are they gonna show I know there's rumors of a Google Watch, although I don't expect it to make an appearance here. I do know that Pebble is going to be making their announcement on Wednesday. Will Sony have something to show in the smartwatch realm, or will their first attempt be their last attempt? Stay tuned for more. So that wraps up another episode of That iPad Guy. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, circle me on Google+, and visit thatipadguy.com to subscribe. See you next time!